In this video, I'll show you how you can make a logo for your YouTube channel, which is completely for free. We're going to be using a website which is fully online. We're not going to have to download anything. And at the end of the video, you're going to have a logo which looks something like this. So let me show you what the website is and how you can use it to make a logo for your YouTube channel. So what you need to do, you need to go to a website called photop.com. It's a completely free Photoshop alternative. And it allows us to well, do a lot of things, but we're going to use it to make a logo. Now, when you're here, you want to go to file, which is in the top left hand corner, go to new, and it should bring up a box like this. Now, what you want to do is you want to go to the width and the height section and you want to make it 800 by 800. Make sure the DPI is 72 and then you can just go ahead and click on create here. Once you've done that, it will bring up a new window and this here is going to be your logo. Now the first thing I would recommend you do is you go to view, you go add guide and you can go ahead and add 50 and then click here and you can select percent. So again, do that 50 and 50. So now we've got guides at 50% and we can easily find the center. Now we can click OK. And now what we want to do is now we want to make our background for our logo. So you can see my background on this logo here is blurred out a bit. And I'm going to show you how you can get this blurred out effect here for your logo. Now, what I like to do is I like to go to Google and I like to type in abstract background. So if you type in abstract background and then go to images, you're going to get really nice backgrounds here that you can use for your logos. You can go and choose any of these really. I'm just going to choose for the sake of the video, we'll choose this one. I think for the example, I use this one here. But you can use any really, it doesn't really matter. So once you've got it, you want to click on copy and then head over to Photopy and then you can paste it in. So to paste it in, go edit and then paste and it's then going to paste it in. And here you can move it around. So now if you go to transform tools, we can just make this bigger. If you hold shift, it's going to stay the same dimensions. So it's not going to be distorted and you can just center it here. So now you've done that, go ahead and click on the tick icon and then uncheck transform controls. And here is your background. Now what you might want to do, you might want to go and blur this or you might want to change the color of it slightly. Now what I usually do is I go to the background, I double click and then I go to color overlay. And here you can just add a color overlay. I'm going to add a color which is similar to the background. So we'll just do this one here and then we'll go OK. And then we can go to layers here. We can click on our abstract layer and we can go ahead and change the blending mode. And each blending mode is going to do something completely different here. So you can change these and get the effect that you're looking for. So let's just go and have a look here. So multiply looks quite good and so does darken. So we're going to keep it on darken. And then one last thing that you might want to do to your background, you might want to go filter, blur, gouache and blur, and you can then blur the background and you can see how it blurs it and it looks kind of like out of focus. And I think it's a really nice effect. So you can go ahead and add that and then click OK. Now, once you've done that, we can now start to work on our text. Now, what you want to do is you want to go to the T tool here and you can type your text. Now, for me, I'm just going to type knowledge base. I'm going to make it cap, so KB. So now if I go back to my select tool, I can now move this around. So you can see here our logo is taking place. Now, you can use any of the fonts that are on Photop. So you can use all of these or you can go ahead and load a font. Now, if you go to a website like 1001freefonts.com, you can go and download any of these fonts and use them. I'm not going to cover how you can do that in this video. So you can go and figure that out yourself or use one of these fonts which are pre-built already into Photop. So now we've got our text. Now what we want to do is edit our text and make our text look good. Like in this one, I have a lot of effects on the text and it just looks a lot better. So here's how we can do that. Now what you want to do, you want to go to the layers and if you see the layer here, you should see you have, you'll now have a text layer. So we can double click on that. We can then first things first go to drop shadow. So you can decide on the color if you want first, but I like to go and add a drop shadow first. So in drop shadow, the by default, it's not going to be like this. The settings are going to be different. Um, but what you can do is you can change the distance, the spread, the size. And you can see when we go through these sliders here, it changes the drop shadow. So I'm going to change the angle to 90 degrees and then we can just change the distance a little bit and bring down the size. Now, this is going to take some experimenting. You're not going to find what you like here on first try. 
but just mess around with these sliders and you'll figure out and you'll get something that you like so i'm going to leave it at this i think so yeah that looks pretty good in my opinion now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and give it a bevel and emboss now doing this will actually bring the font out it will bring it to life and it will give it more like a 3d look so if you go to bevel and emboss you can mess around with this so we can bring the size up and down and again, this is all experimenting to see what, what works best with your text. So that looks decent. We're going to leave it at that. So now what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide our text layer. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to duplicate it. So we have a backup and then I'm going to convert the new one to a smart object. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on the text layer. I'm going to click here where it says duplicate layer. So we have two of them. I'm then going to minimize one of them so this is going to be our backup and i'm going to convert one of them to a smart object so now we have a smart object so we can't no longer edit this text but now what we can do is we can double click on it we can go to outer glow and we can give it like kind of like an outer glow here maybe we want it to glow let's see here what looks good maybe a yellow so now we can go and edit these settings as well so we can bring the glow down turn the glow up we can also change the spread of the glow and you can see with these settings, you can bring them up and down and get the desired effect that you want. So I'm going to leave it at that. So now we've got the glow. Now we've got our text looking quite good. Now what we can do is we can go to transform tools, just make sure it's centered. And there we go. Now, if we wanted to do one more thing, we could go to edit, transform, and we can click something like perspective or distort. And you can then change how the text looks so you can give it a better perspective here. So let's just leave it at that. So when you've then got your logo done, you can go to file and first you want to save it as a PSD file so you can go and make changes to this in the future. After you've done that, go and export it as a PNG file and again, make sure it's 800 by 800, click save and then you'll be able to then download it to your computer and then use it as your YouTube channel logo. So I hope that video did help you out. Let me know in the comment section below if it did and I'll see you all in the next one.